Welcome, everybody. Great to be together on such a beautiful day. All of what Miss Rachel just announced and that much more is included in the Parish News. Also found in the Parish News is the Connection Card. If you're visiting with us and we'd be like, uh, like to be added to our mailing list or our email list, please give the contact information. If any of you here need anything from the church office or me, that Connection Card is your ticket to that. Fill it out. Place it in the offering plate later on during our service when the offerings are received. And speaking of offerings, the giving kiosk is back. The iPad is out there on the old altar right in the center of the, the lobby, the narthex. And if uh, you want to give in a different form through a credit card, you just hit the offering button and then it'll walk you right through the process of uh, giving a donation through the giving kiosk. And thank you for all of your support for our work and our ministry here at St. Stephen. I am very excited about this afternoon as we have the bowling tournament. It's really a family fun afternoon. Um, my balls are all polished and we're ready to go. And uh, we've got all the lanes secured um, and, and paid for. There's still some spaces as some people donated a lane but aren't planning on going. So if you want to come and join us at the last minute, come on down to the bowling alley right around the corner on Douglas Avenue around 1.30. Uh, we're going to have pizza. We're going to have soda. We're going to start bowling around 2 o'clock. We'll be done around 4 o'clock. And it should just be a great afternoon. I am so happy that we're together and we're doing this. Um, and as we began to announce last week, we are so excited that Music Camp is back and registration opens up this Tuesday, March 1st. And the week of Music Camp is June 20th through the 24th. Uh, the play, the musical, is all about that baby. It's a Christmas story in June. And uh, registration is online only, stephen.org slash Music Camp 2022. Campers, anyone who's age five and have completed kindergarten through grade seven, and of course we need helpers, so anyone who's completed eighth grade and up, we will happily take your help for Music Camp this summer. Wednesday begins for us the season of Lent with Ash Wednesday. Uh, if you want to join the chapel children and families at 10 o'clock in the morning, you are more than welcome, not just this Wednesday, but every Wednesday when chapel gets together. And our official Ash Wednesday service is Wednesday night at 645. Uh, for the season of Lent, if you want to pick up one of the Lenten devotional booklets on your way out also, uh, right near the giving kiosk, it's called Grace Unbounded. And starting Wednesday, you have a daily at-home devotion uh, that is connected to the season of Lent. That is our gift to you, so take it home and utilize it during the season of Lent. Because it is Ash Wednesday, the Wednesday Bible study will not meet this week. We will uh, reconvene the following Wednesday. Today is Transfiguration Sunday, so let us take a moment of silent prayer, and then we're going to rise and join together in our opening hymn, How Good Lord to Be Here. Please stand as you're able.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God tenderly invites us to come to him, confident that we can ask for mercy and forgiveness. Dear God in heaven, I confess to you that I am a sinner. As a father has compassion on his children, so also I pray, O Lord, have compassion on me. In mercy look not on my sin, but on the righteousness of Jesus who died in my place. The scriptures teach that after hearing the voice of God on the Mount of Transfiguration, the disciples looked up to see only Jesus. He alone is your hope for forgiveness and salvation. He alone was given to die for you. For his sake, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm number 99. The Lord is King, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great reigns on Zion, he is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name, holy is he. Mighty King, the Lord of our justice, you have established and appointed, you have executed justice and righteousness in your kingdom. Extol the Lord our God, worship at his footstool, holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among the priests, Daniel also was among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes that he gave them. O oh Lord our God, you answered them. You are a giving God to them, but a man of your wrongdoings. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing. Yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning is from Exodus, the 34th chapter. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he had come down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them. And Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, but the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went to speak with him. The word of the Lord. The 
the second reading today is from 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. Since then we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside, but their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day when they hear the reading of the old covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able. Hallelujah, Lord, to shall we go? The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Now, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. Then the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated.
Come on down, children. Let's keep talking about the light. This is the blessing that we have with children's worship arts on Wednesday nights. So if uh, you have a child or a grandchild that you want involved, we would love to have them join us Wednesdays at 5.30 over in the CLC. Matthew, slip over there, please. You try that every week. Every week you try that. All right, guess what we're talking about today? There we go. It's right here. Not yet, but eventually. Matthew. Good idea? Mm, it is a good idea, but yeah. Trip. That's part of this, right? Because when you look at it on this out, you know it's a light bulb, right? Is it any good right now? It's just a light bulb. Yeah. What do we need for it to be good for us? A circuit, batteries. Electricity, what do we call that? I got the power. <laughs> right? Right? So we need some power. Now, we'll no power, power. Before you sang that beautiful song, This Little Light of Mine, we heard the gospel about the transfiguration of Jesus. Big fancy word, right? What? Go ahead. It's like transform, exactly. Figure is an appearance on the outside. To transfer anything is to change it, right? So what happened is when they went up to the top of the mountain, Jesus looked like a man, right? He just had his skin. Look like the rest of them, like Peter, James, and John. Then all of a sudden, out of heaven, Moses and Elijah appear. And all of a sudden, this happens to Jesus' skin. The power. What power? The power of God and God's love shined through his human skin. And this is a very important day for us on the church's calendar because what it was, the transfiguration was a gift, first to Peter, James, and John, and then to all of us today when we continue to hear this story, because what God is doing is reminding us that as Moses in the Old Testament talked about the one who was going to come and take care of sin and death, and as Elijah and the rest of the prophets promised that someday God was going to send a Savior, there at that moment the light of God's power in Jesus shined through his human flesh. Jesus is God and man together. And that was God's moment to say, yes, he's the one we promised for a long time. He's the one who's our hope and our salvation. So that's what was going on. Jesus, just as a skinned man, Jesus with his power of God shining through his flesh. How about a prayer together? Hold your hands, close your eyes, bow your heads, repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for shining your light on us always. Help me when I see the light to share it in the darkness of the world. Amen. Thank you for everything today, especially your song. Thank you for responding. Good manners. Your parents did well. In spite of the threat of sanctions and the tough talk, in spite of the collaboration of countries involved in NATO, in spite of the fact we elected a new American leader here who was going to bring more respect and peace throughout the nations of the world, in spite of the interconnectedness of all the world's nations through technology and through trade, in spite of all the vast amounts of history and information at our fingertips, 
that talks over and over again about the horrors of aggression between nations in spite of the thousands of voices that have called out for the sanctity of life in spite of the ecumenical prayers of religious leaders around the world in spite of all these things we all heard the news this week of Russia moving aggressively against the Ukraine another painful reminder to us of what sin and evil brings in the world another painful reminder to us of what happens when our hope is in the wrong place for as much as we in the world may sit around with wishful thinking wishful thinking that all the nations and all the peoples of the world could come together in one big kumbaya session around a world fire and have peace we see again how our hope in humanity lets us down and fails us and lest us not think that this is just about a couple of countries on the other side of the planet who are having a skirmish with themselves because we are not disconnected from the events that are happening right now it's been the decision of many of our leaders through the years that has exacerbated the tensions in the situation that we face right now and this is just yet another example to us of how no matter how much we may hope there's nothing but light and peace in the world the darkness and the threat of chaos that is brought by sin is constantly threatening to cloud us and overwhelm us the transfiguration of our Lord brings to an end the season after the epiphany and this season of the epiphany has all been about the light remember how the season started on January 6th the light of the star led the wise men to the light of the world and even in spite of the darkness of the evil reign of King Herod those wise men were able to circumvent King Herod go back to their own home country and continue to share the light by telling the the great message that a babe was born in Bethlehem throughout this season after the epiphany we have been reminded of not only seeing the light ourselves but how important it is for us to continue to shine that light into the darkness of the world around us and as the season comes to a close today again light plays an important part in the message that God brings to us for the light of Jesus's godliness his divine power shines through his flesh as Moses and Elijah appear out of heaven and God the Father's voice again just as it did at Jesus's baptism validates the assurance for us that Jesus is exactly who the Bible says Jesus is Jesus is the only hope in the midst of the darkness of this world and this is our focus focusing on the light not just during the season after the epiphany but every time we gather as the people of God because we know how blinding the darkness can be we know we need to stay focused on the light in order to better navigate our way through the darkness that sin and evil brings into our lives and what I'm finding very sad lately is that I don't have to spend a lot of time in sermons anymore pointing out the darkness and the sin that we struggle with because I feel like the last few years have been a living daily object lesson of how the darkness surrounds us in spite of how sophisticated technological educated and wise we have begun we come we see again individually and personally and collectively as a people and a nation how we continue to repeat the same mistakes over and over again and in spite of all the scientific and medical advancements that we have had over the last century the darkness of sickness continues to threaten us and in spite of the unbelievable loss of life from two world wars countless skirmishes and terrorism over the last century we still have nations moving aggressively against each other in spite of all the propaganda and the political promises from people who tell us if we just but put our trust in them they'll shine the light for us they'll be our hope in spite of us over and over again seeing them let us down and if we think this is the only age and time when we've had those false political promises 
I gained a very interesting insight four years ago when I had the blessed opportunity to go visit Italy. While we were in Italy, we got to go visit Pompeii. And you know there's been some great archaeological finds that have happened, especially over the last few years. So while we were there, we got to go see the arena where a lot of the sporting events and the games took place. And on one of the walls, as you enter into the arena, they unearthed beautiful artwork that were political ads for an official running at that time making promises against another elected official that he was trying to beat. 2,000 years ago, the same types of false promises were being made. A reminder to us again of how the effects of sin and evil, the darkness that clouds our lives has been going on for a very, very long time. And that's why the events on the Mount of Transfiguration are so important for us. Because it assures us that God's plan to shine the light is timeless. It's an eternal plan. And the appearance of Moses and Elijah out of heaven is God connecting the dots, or so shall I say, shining the rays of light on all the ways God put together the promise to send a Savior in the world. Moses represents the law. Moses told us about the beginning when creation fell into sin. Elijah was the first of the prophets, the rest of the Old Testament. And by having them appear with Jesus as his divine power shines through his flesh, God from heaven is saying, this is the one the Bible has talked about for 1,500 years. And so here we are, 4,000 plus years later. And this is the one in which we have our hope. This is the only light that can truly outshine the darkness and the chaos brought by sin and by death. And every time we gather here in this place around God in the gifts of word and sacrament, God's face and light is shining on us. Our Old Testament and our epistle lesson this morning talked about how Moses, when he came down from the mountain after meeting personally with God, had to veil his face because his face was shining too from the divine power of God. Every time we finish our service before we leave this place, we are blessed by God saying to us, my face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Like Moses, Peter, James, and John, every time we're here in word and sacrament, the face and the presence of God is shining on us. The power of God's light is shining through the darkness of our lives to give us hope. Transfiguration Sunday brings to an end the season of Epiphany and gets us ready for this time of Lent. At the end of our service today, we're going to figuratively bury our songs of Alleluia and praise as we sing our closing hymn as a reminder to us that for as much as we want to always live in the light, as long as we live on this side of heaven, we're going to have to deal with the darkness. And so Lent provides an opportunity for us to reflect upon those struggles. But our reflections during Lent are always to point us to the light that comes. And that's why at the end of Lent is the most important light of all, the light that's shown on the, east, the empty tomb of Easter morning at Jesus' resurrection. And so as we enter together into this time of Lent this year, we have an opportunity together to reflect upon some of those struggles, some of the things that darken our journey and our path of faith. Our midweek Wednesday services are going to uh, reflect upon the theme, um, springing stumbling box. Six different questions that often come up that challenge our faith. That cause us maybe to question whether or not God is there and God is real. If you are struggling with those things, if you have questions in your faith, I invite you to join us on Wednesdays at 645 in this place during the season of Lent. Because what will happen is that in the midst of the darkness that surrounds you, you will see God's light. For that is our only true hope. In the midst of a world where darkness is all around us, it's the Spirit of God that continually shines the light of Christ on us. Here, 
and eternally. Amen. Please stand as you're able. our voices together confessing our faith with the Christians throughout history in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with his scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated him. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair, and your goodness will conquer evil. God of grace, hear our prayer. The mountains and valleys sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape. Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, canyons carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views, and sands shaped by ocean tides. God of grace, hear our prayer. You love justice and establish equity. Strengthen leaders of local governments, community nonprofits, and grassroots campaigns. Bless them with gifts of integrity, creativity, and sound conscience. Build up safe and joyful communities where all people may thrive. God of grace, hear our prayer. Heal those who are in distress, especially all those we remember at this time. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of treatment. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. God of grace, hear our prayer. Today we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop. 
This week we enter the wilderness of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us during this change of season. Pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who contribute to our worship life. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Blessed are they who listened to Christ's voice in this life and now rest with him. Transform us from glory into glory and give us your peace that we do not lose heart. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Protect the people of the Ukraine and Russia as they deal with leaders who are sinful and evil. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated as we have the opportunity now to give back that which God has given to us by receiving the offerings. you lift up your hearts let us give thanks unto the Lord our God 
It is truly good, right, and just that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who at his transfiguration revealed his glory to his disciples that they might be strengthened to proclaim his cross and resurrection and with all the faithful look forward to the glory of life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks for the faith the Holy Spirit has put in our hearts that we may acknowledge our Savior who not only has served in your house but is in fact one with you as Lord over it. Gathered in his name, we ask that we may receive the forgiveness, life, and salvation that come through this sacrament. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. The Lord with you as always. For God has loved us so much that he has given to us his Son as our Savior. Therefore, as God's beloved children, we have the courage to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father, pleased with your Son on the Mount of Transfiguration, we give thanks for the pardon and peace you have given us for his sake in this sacrament. As he descended to the plain with his disciples, accompany us now on our journey with your Holy Spirit, that we be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord look upon you with favor and always give you peace. Amen. Amen. Luke writes after the transfiguration that the three disciples kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. Because we know about our Lord's resurrection, we cannot keep silent. But during the season of Lent, which begins this Wednesday, we shall mute our liturgical praises and refrain from singing our alleluias until our Easter celebration. So let us sing our farewell to that song of gladness now. Go with Christ into a weary world, share the good news.